Do you remember the first story that was so spellbinding that it drove you to break the rules and stay up all night? To keep reading, keep listening, keep playing? So good you forgot your life and lived there? So good that the moment it ended you asked yourself, what next? Welcome to the floor. Our goal is to take you back, take you deeper, to explore and understand more, and relive that childlike wonder. Join us as we dive deep into humanity's greatest stories, no matter how they are told, through books, movies, television, even games. One of us does an in-depth research on our topic. One of us is familiar with the topic. And one of us knows nothing. So the right questions will always be asked and will be addressed for anyone coming into the topic, regardless of how much you know. Enjoy another world another adventure, another spellbinding story. Join us on the floor. All right, we are back. We are still in the Xenoverse. We have very much kind of crossed over into the predator side of things, the Yutani, of the Wayland Yutani. We, Yunta. <laughs> we are talking about the some of the things that are going to be relevant to the upcoming movie Prey, or if you if this is after the release and you're listening to this, then you know, the movie that has already come out. So this is going to be dealing with, of course, the Predators or the Yunta and the Comanche tribe. So we had a very short talking about kind of the Comanche people and their history and the reason why they are chosen by the Predators in this moment. And then Eli and Aaron had a discussion that I don't even know about. So I'll let them talk about that. Yeah, we talked about Predator technology. And uh, in this episode, I want to talk about the similarities between the Comanche tribe and the predators. The overlap. Um, okay. I thought you guys had already done that. I thought that's what I thought that's what you guys no, did. We do. talked <laughs> about just the predator, just weapons. the predator tech. Okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. The different weapons that they have, and uh, one thing we thought you'd enjoy is we talked about the goo. They have goo that uh, they use to do all kinds of things. They can heal bullet wounds. They can melt tile into a paste to cover up a severed arm they use it to dissolve a alien body at one point <laughs> and we were like this almost seems like uh, the wizard class in their spell slots they have a bunch of different goo that can do different things, <laughs> different things. you know but it almost only got so many and, and then you should got joe just like oh great day i got goo for that bad day <laughs> I got goof for that. Oh, it's an apocalypse. I got goof for that. And Aaron's just like, oh, well, I got my neck gun. So I. Yeah. Right. You'd be a predator class that specializes in goo because they'd be like spell slots and you just have a bunch of goo. Did you guys ever see that uh, Jupiter ascending? Yeah. And I, I think I don't remember exactly the injury, but I think a guy gets shot. And uh, they go see a human who's not from Earth. He's connected to like this ancient advanced civilization of humans. And guys basically got like a hand can of hairspray and he just sprays it and it like seals it and heals it up in like seconds. That's mm-hmm. what that reminds me of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, you could make that go. Yeah, you could make that go, Air- and then they make it into a spray. Yeah, you could. Do yeah, that. why not? It's an aerosol goo. Like, I, we aerosol talking- goo, yeah. So, should we start with Comanche weapons? All right, so I think uh, the the first one we want to talk about is the war lance. Uh, yes, so this was a a long spear used by the Comanche. We did mention they were mounted warriors, and so the bow, of course, was probably going to be the first weapon of choice. But the mm-hmm. second would be, of course, the war lance, which was really long, intended to be used as a melee weapon while mounted, and still have some good range to hit targets away from your horse. And this was uh, a big part of the culture having a war lance was a high symbol of status and often they would be used in ceremonial dances that would kind of be like a centerpiece so it was it was highly valued praised and important to them not just as a weapon but as a symbol of their culture and of course the predator has his spear as well Mm -hmm. yeah that extendable spear so it's easy to carry on him but uh yeah they both have this spear now in the trailers i haven't seen the predator wielding a spear now not all of them do but i'm wondering i believe this would be the first time the predators have come to earth and i wonder if they see how the comanches use that spear and they're like i'm going to learn how to do that right back up just a second i was gonna say yeah i saw alien versus predator Predator. that that egyptian tower thing in antarctica had been sitting for like all of the time like yeah. all the time it was there. 
Like all of human time that was there. So you're saying this was the first time they came and this was in like late 1700s at the earliest. And then this other one in the ice castle in Antarctica was like over 2000 years old. And somehow this one was first back up. Okay. Okay. I I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Different tribes. I, I, I do think we have a subtitle for prey and it's the first hunt. Mm. Um, I mean, it so, could. This could just be, you know, uh, retcon, right? Yeah, they're, I've talked about that a ton. They've tossed out the the original lore of Alien versus Predator and just, you know, right. this is the written. first Disney Predator movie. Yeah, right. So it is a whole new. Company. This is the first family friendly. <laughs> That's just what I, I didn't say that. I know, but you said Disney. That's what people <laughs> used to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like in, in, instead of the heroes being a bunch of mercenary meatheads who are drinking alcohol and smoking and getting high, it's these ones have goo. It's a teenage girl, you know. So it's Disney it's a princess. It's a princess. But- She's a Comanche. Comanche culture is not family friendly. That's true. Comanche culture is not family friendly. <laughs> they a were brutal. Is not family friendly. They were brutal. Disney's like brutal. what is it? Uh, they even talked about like the Comanche were very democratic. But this is how Comanche uh, democracy worked. Be like, I want to start a war group. Who's with me? And if you get enough, you've got a war group, and you just became a new version of the Comanche, and you're going off to war. That was that. That was Comanche politics right there. <laughs> right that was uh-huh. de- that was their democratic system and their, their whole political system who wants to go war tonight like, good all right let's do it okay so we could go fishing which we did that last saturday or there's some pioneers that are parked right over across the stream and and they were fishing yesterday so let's go just take their fish <laughs> but also also i know you guys were going to ask Friday night, full moon. Full moon. There you go. Got that Comanche moon. Yeah. Uh, so super easy. We'll we'll be able to see. They'll be asleep. They'll probably be drunk. We'll take their alcohol and their fish. And their horses. And their horses. <laughs> Who's in? And then yeah, that sounds fun. I also wanted to bring up uh the knives, right? So the predator has a ceremonial knife um made out of uh Zeno bone. And is used to uh, we call it collect Z-bone, trophies, like the the real <laughs> xenomorph like fans. We call it so. so. I, I guess the the predators wouldn't have that then when they come to Earth because the the Earth is the first hunt, right? That is where they get blooded. So, no, no, so, not get blooded. This is where they practice. Mm-hmm. So I believe it's been selected as a hunting ground, and this would be the first time. They come and do a hunt on the native species of Earth, a.k.a. humans. Right. Or I guess we could even take the interpretation of the first hunt as not the first hunt on humans, but the first hunt for these predators, because we know that's what this is. You come here for training. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that, and that would be an interpretation that is not retcon. Well, I think it's safe to assume that they that's still part of their culture. They have just now reached Earth and selected it as a hunting ground. That there are other planets right. that are hunting grounds for them. Right. Yeah. All right. Um, so the Comanche also had a knife referred to as the scalping knife because scalping was also important in their culture and used as trophies to show their status symbol. Yeah. And so the predators do the same thing. Do the same thing. Yeah. I really wonder how much of the Comanche was an influence on the, the development of the predator, because like it, the similarities really stack up when you start looking at it. They do. And I, I think this, like I was trying to see if I could find anything and I, I didn't. And, and it, it could have, and, and it may be that the Rastafari warrior that they based it on was just similar to the Comanche. And so mm. that, that could have just been how that all the similarities matched up. Um, Right. We don't have that painting, so we can't really say, but Rastafari is, is a Christian spur. It, it pops up in like the 30s, 1930s. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and is heavily tied into like Ethiopia. And, and so it's very Christian beliefs. I mean, if you've heard Bob Marley, that that's Rastafari beliefs. Mm-hmm. That, that he, he was preaching. You know? So he's, he doesn't like women crying and all that. So <laughs> one love. <laughs> so anyways, something 
I think was just a really good choice for Prey to put Predator versus Comanche. Well, yeah. I think at that point it was very intentional, right? At some point, somebody yeah. was looking at it and being like, there's a lot of similarities. And uh, I think we, we mentioned this with Aaron, you know, if we look at human history, it, depending on the year we're chosen, right? If we're looking at the 17, 1800s, the Comanche are very possibly the most ferocious and dangerous of all human cultures, right? They're not expansionists. Mm-hmm. They just want their planes. But, you know, by the time Europeans... Uh, the Spanish and the French are claiming peace of America. They have rifles. They have mm-hmm. cannon. They have cavalry. They have, you know, full plated armor. And even with all these tools of war, they say, stay away from the Comanche. They will mess you up. Right. It's, they they it's, also have one other thing that apparently the Comanche don't have. Fear. Fear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, well, so, but yeah, but it just, you know, all these, all these weapons of war that are crushing the natives under the boot of the conquistadors. They come up the Comanche and they beg, you know what? It is just better to go around. Just go around. <laughs> you just so, imagine that conversation. Just like, you know what? Looking at the map, I just, I think I left my piano uh, back like 30 miles east. So if we so, loop back around, <laughs> uh, I don't want to go that way anymore. <laughs> Right, and Comanche means enemy, right? Like, I, I like the second version. Someone who wants to fight me all the time. <laughs> like, will you guys just chill out? Be like, you know, come here. Not a problem, right? <laughs> Be like, but if you come here, we don't chill out. That's not our style. Yeah. yeah. And we're I, not the Shoshone. They chilled out. We weren't into that. <laughs> <laughs> we have no chill. We have no chill. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, let's take a break here, and then we'll uh, come back. All right. Let's show for good. Okay, so we have been mentioning at the end of our episodes recently about the treasure room, how, as Aaron likes to describe it, in the floor we go deep into things, but in the treasure room we kind of go wide. And... We wanted to give people who have never been in the treasure room uh, a little bit of a sample. So going forward, we'll probably be uh, putting in little bits and pieces here. So here is a small clip uh, from the treasure room. We hope you enjoy it and are interested in uh, learning more in there. I think what I would want to do is have some kind of goo. That could make my like my my skin or well the my outside shell my skin tough as iron. My outside so, shell, my skin. <laughs> you know that stuff. <laughs> that what calls it is shell. <laughs> Doctor, we've been in the Xenoverse for too long. <laughs> that you want to you want the Xeno armor. <laughs> well, I want something. Yeah. So so I, see, could just, I could just see see Aaron like like uh, at the. <laughs> Like some salon, he'd be like, "Be like, I need something for my outside shell," and he's like, <laughs> yeah. he's like holding up his arm. Let's bring it back. We've been talking about the Xenoverse, uh, the new movie coming out, Prey. Uh, they're going to be hunting Comanche. We've been talk- talking about the similarities between the Comanches, uh, also known as the ones who want to fight me all the time. <laughs> similarities between them and the predator who their catchphrase is i want to be on even ground sort of <laughs> so these two will really excited to see how that plays out because as much as the comanches love to fight and hunt and all that cool stuff we've talked about predators still have very advanced technology which they don't see as cheating so it's it's gonna not be a one-to-one in my opinion like that's not going to be a thing, but uh, I guess I guess that's one question I wanted to ask you guys. Like, you think it's going to be like how many commands do you think it would take to take on a predator and no, stand I, a chance of winning? I think part of that is the question is how much tech does the predator bring with him? You know? Well, the other question is do the commands you know he's there? <laughs> do he? Yeah, because he can take out like six, and then they're like, wait a second, sitting bull was sitting without his throat chopped open four minutes ago and now it's chopped open. And now it's chopped open. I 
I I just had a thought. I was like, I wonder if they're going to do a Comanche move. Like, I wonder if that's the finale. Like, it's night time. Mm. Like, it's dark, buddy. We all have trouble seeing. <laughs> Let's do but, this. But, 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 but because he uses reflection, refraction, and reflection, maybe they're able to see him just enough. <laughs> like, they could well, do some cool stuff. Yeah, so, I I really do hope we see a Comanche moon battle between the Predator and the Comanche. Oh, it's definitely happening at nighttime. <laughs> Predator won. Arnold, nighttime, covers himself in mud to conceal his heat signature. Uh, you know, uh, time and again, uh, it's at night and they find some way to mess with his vision, you know, to conceal themselves because, you know, kind of to use uh, the and same Comanche, technique. Comanche, well, they're, they're very crafty, aren't they? Extremely, yeah. Um. And and we're gonna see uh, her using a rope dart weapon, but I wanted to cover the the basic weapons before. I'm, I'm not quite done yet. That uh, gun. Uh, I wanted to bring up the shield, or as they call it, a medicine shield. Mm, uh, yes. Uh, it's usually uh, two layers of buffalo hide, and in the middle they stuff with uh, feathers or fur or even paper, and uh, th- this could stop arrows, uh, and sometimes could also stop bullets. Um, and we see in the film the predator pull out a shield as well. It looks uh, like some kind of retractable shield. Well, that's that's his thing. He kind of fights you on the ground. His his weapons are far more advanced, but they are similar to yours. Like sword and sh- sword and shield, sword and shield. <laughs> you know, how come yours extends? How come yours whip? extends? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how come you can throw your shield? <laughs> like and the blade lights on fire, <laughs> you know. Like, like they're definitely not quite the same, but you know, and it's made them. out of a super alloy, and it's gonna chop right through your weapon yeah. if you try to parry. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, but at the same time, they like, yeah, they've got weird rules of what's fair. <laughs> right. Level playing field, sort of. They're also not in the same weight class. Like yeah. predators, much bigger, much heavier, much. Predator stronger, also didn't faster. let them know. Like I would love if they all get like a letter or something. Like you will be hunted for a month at some point. Like for a solid month during the course of this next month, you will be hunted at any point during that month. So be ready and on your toes. I think in Predators, um, that message is sent pretty clear. That one starts out with people coming conscious while falling through the sky, and they have a parachute deploy, and they land on on a planet. And they're like, I think there's some weird going on. I was in bed last night. Uh, I was in bed last night. <laughs> this isn't my room. So that's a pretty clear message, I think. You know, it's not written down for them or anything, but they get the message pretty, pretty quick. It helps enough. Yeah, because I just, that's the one big thing that's not on level playing field. Because if the Predators as good as they are, which a lot of them are, they kill like three people before people are like, Wait a second. second. <laughs> so my they, teammates weren't supposed to die. So, but at the same time, they do pick people who are like warriors in a time of war. You know, so it's like maybe you're not expecting the predator, but you are expecting an enemy. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wait. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I actually just remembered in the original Predator film, my favorite character was the the, the Indian. Guy, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. the guy who he was always the one tracking and stuff. He was so intelligent and so smart. He just wasn't a good enough fighter. And we got to mention, you know, his buddy says to him, you ain't afraid of no man. And then he says, it ain't no man out there. <laughs> if he yeah. says, I, I like, yeah, that's, that's super accurate. Like, I have a right to be scared <laughs> because <laughs> you're right. I'm not scared of any man. And that's not a man. <laughs> so, so the check mark box that we're talking about, scared of no man, still true. Yep. Because yep. this <laughs> check mark, not a man. Uh, All yeah, things but, are true. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, he goes toe to toe the predator. You know, he doesn't make it, but it's it's honorable. Uh, it is. And, it's at least well, it's it's honorable in the sense that the predator was on level playing field, sort of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you watched Predators? I don't think I have. Joe, have you? No. Okay, that, that's homework. But uh, Predators <laughs> is really great and, and recreates uh, Predator really well. And and they have a similar uh, thing going on with a Japanese ya- Yakazu. Uh, Yakuza? Yakuza, yeah. And he uh, 
faces off with the predator with a samurai sword and the predator's using its blades. And uh yeah. Yeah, you gotta keep it kind of fair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. always so funny when they're like, Okay, this is fair. I'd be like, it's not. <laughs> yeah, you get two guys, they're both like it is way. more fair than you pulling out your laser and sniping him, and he's got a samurai sword. That's true, but it's still not fair. Well, I just I just picture like you you put just like a normal guy in a room and then you put Captain America in there. It's like we're both using our fists. That's <laughs> fair, right? That's fair, right? Well, no, because your fist punches a brass knuckles. Concrete. So, yeah. You or or you get like a, some kid with his little like robot wars little robot. And so Tony Stark shows up in his Iron Man suit. He's like, we both got robots. <laughs> you both like you both turn them on. They both can do things. You wear them. Like, what's yeah. the difference? Mine just has a grabby arm, <laughs> and I, I have a simple remote. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The predator thinking on this is funny, and it's funny every time we talk about it. Just like they, they think about this, so weird. Oh, well, it's their honor system, not yeah. ours, right? Yeah, yeah they, I think they'd be more advanced if they played on a more level playing field instead of cheating all the time. But it's just <laughs> me. All right, uh, now, what else did you want to talk about, Eli? Uh, the Warhawk Club, uh, which is what the Comanches would use, and uh, a similar throwing uh, weapon to the Predator blades. Right? The they they have those discs or the, uh, the five pointed star they use at one point. Uh, um, the Predators. So- uh uh-huh, the predators they they have blades but there's uh have returning features whereas you know the which warhawk is, which club is super did. super level playing field <laughs> oh i missed that's okay oh you missed you're dead now in the trailer we we see uh our uh, main character she develops a uh, kind of a rope dart hatchet so it's more like a rope hatchet right she's tied a rope to a hatchet so that she can throw it and return it to her hand and this is a Chinese style, um, sometimes yeah, I, called I, meteor hammer, when they would use a blunt weapon rather okay. than a bladed weapon. Interesting. And uh, uh, this is a very powerful weapon. Um, this one, uh, its first iterations seem like it might have come from uh, more of an entanglement weapon that had uh, a heavy thing at both sides of the rope and then eventually developed into... A martial style, art art style, you know, of uh, uh, often referred to as rope dart, and uh, we're going to see her using this. And you you can uh, achieve uh, speeds of up to a hundred miles when using a rope dart, uh, because you you kind of wind the tension of the rope around you and then release it all at once. Um, somebody with below average strength can crush through concrete with a meteor hammer mm. if they know how to use it. And, and somebody like Jackie Chan can break basically every bone in their body with a meteor hammer. Did he? he he's, he's used those weapons. I don't know if you guys ever seen Shanghai Knights, but he had, I forgot what kind of weapon it was. It was, it was a rope and some weighted instrument. The, on the, uh, yeah. uh, the shoe, it's a, it's a horseshoe. He used oh, yes, rope yes. dart with he a broke his shoe. jaw, his, his oh, arm, did he? And, yeah, yeah. No, Jackie this is just a, breaks everything. Yeah, and, and this is a, an advanced weapon. You do not give this to like like early martial artists. It, 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 you Jackie can, Chan is really good, and he always breaks stuff because he's like, I'm gonna try new things. If you think you can hurt yourself with nunchucks, you can like, Die. you you could yeah, you could kill yourself using a meteor hammer. Uh, it, it is a dangerous weapon. We're not telling you to kill yourself with a meteor hammer. Don't do it. I'm to be gentle. Be careful. Like I, I know uh, people. They were trying to come up with like a soft meteor hammer, and they like did like a sock and a sock, and they were still bruising themselves. <laughs> Bruising's fine. A but... sock weapon. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's a, it's essentially uh, a weapon uh, tied at the end of a rope, and this was yeah. really good for actually having a concealed weapon and then you could also fire it multiple times yeah point. interesting Let's you know and, and so i think the meteor hammer is the most popular of this one the style's called rope dart uh so sometimes you know it'd be more of a, a dart or blade uh uh what's the guy's name from mortal Kombat? scorpion scorpion, scorpion. he does rope to talk dart. about him have you guys seen that movie 
the, the newest yet. one the newest one he rocks out some hardcore rope dart just taking and, out guys left and right and so a lot of people i want to talk about that real quick it's not important to anything other than the fact that it's awesome a lot of people <laughs> don't know ninjas were created because of samurai samurai were overbearing and part of the government and so mm-hmm. ninjas were created like by the villagers to fight back and so that kunai or whatever it's called that little tool sure. that he he uh the shuriken ties, no, yeah, it's a the, kunai. It's a kunai. It's, it's, it's a, a kunai. kunai. He ties it on the end of a rope. Kunai, it's it's a shovel they use for, for gardening. Oh. They're all just normal villagers, so they use village-style tools. Yep. Interesting. So they specifically design their weapons to fight samurai. And so it's fascinating because if you put a ninja up against most other combatants, they may not fare well because they have specifically designed everything they do to take out a samurai quickly. Mm-hmm. Anyways, nothing to do with the predator, just something I martial really arts styles. Right. We're talking martial <laughs> arts, but I think yeah. that is going to wrap us up for our yeah. similarities between the two. I want to just mention here that uh, predators and Comanches both hunt people. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. All right. What is our treasure room question? Well, no, before that, what what are we talking about next? Do is have- this the end of the Xenoverse? I, I think, think we other, are wrapping up the Xenoverse. We have one so. more episode, right? When 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 Prey comes out, we're going to talk about it. Yes, yeah. Okay. So that that'll that'll All be right. our wrap. So that is the end of Prey. What is next? Like, what are we talking about? What universe are we diving into next? So we are going to be talking about Phase Four of the MCU. I also want to know if you guys would be interested in talking about the comic universe as it stands now. I know some people prefer that to the MCU, but the MCU is more mainstream. Marvel comic universe, MCU. MCU is Marvel cinematic universe. Oh, oh. That's what we're talking about right now, mainly. But the comic universe has a lot of good content as well so we can touch on that stuff if people want us to i want to touch comics yeah me too i think we'll do phase four uh, and just catch everyone up on that and then we'll dive into some comics and then after that it sounds like joe's got witcher yes and then after that we will go back to the witcher we're going to make sure we get really everything really flushed out so you're ready for season three and then of course we will dive into season three and uh, so that's probably the next, uh, you know, six to eight months of the floor right there. Yes, sir. All right. And the treasure room question. What are we going to talk about? Anyone got one? If not, I can I can come up with one. Go for it. Okay. Well, I've got two and you guys can pick which one you like more. Or we can talk about both. We'll find out in the treasure room. One, if you could pick any type of goo as a predator to have and use, what would it be? Number two, if you could fight or if you had to fight something on even ground, well, sort of, what would you want to fight and why? And the perspectives are you are the well, sort of character and you are the getting hunted by the well, sort of character. <laughs> well, sort of, you mean the predator? Yeah. that. So, <laughs> so for instance, like Captain America versus Hawkeye, I feel like Captain America would dominate because he's got superpowers and Hawkeye doesn't. But Okay. You know, I, I got you. Almost level playing field, but not quite. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about it in the treasure room. All right. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and want more on the topic, we record a special treasure room for our patrons after every episode. In the regular episode, we go deep. In the treasure room, we go wide. To enjoy the bonus content, sign up at the fluorite level or higher. There is a treasure room for every episode from August 2021 and on. That's double the content. Two episodes a week instead of one. Go to www.patreon.com backslash floor, fantasy and lore. That's floor spelled F-L-O-R-E. Select the Floorite tier or higher. Immediately after each episode is released, the Treasure Room will post the bonus audio on Patreon. They are identified by the tag Treasure Room After and the title of the episode. You can also do a search for the keywords Treasure Room and find all the content you've been missing. Thanks for listening. Leave us a review. 
tell us why you like listening to us. Is it our awesome deep dives? Is it our amazing back and forth? Is it our charming good looks? What would you like us to add or change? You can put that in the review as well. We read reviews. Yeah, and if you're going to be leaving us a review telling us what you like about it, maybe you even want to share the content with your friends. Uh, Like and share on social media. You can join us on Twitter and Facebook. We post memes. And we actually started a Discord, so come play with us. So uh, a lot of the worlds we cover have a retcon. Uh, If you're not familiar with that term, it's reconstruction. Or sometimes we might uh, use a bad source for some of our lore research. And if that happens, uh, feel free to email us at floorfantasyandlore at gmail.com. That is floor spelled F-L-O-R-E, fantasyandlore at gmail.com. And if you're angry enough, we'll read it on the air. (laughs) Yes, we will. Also, the treasure room is now available. We have locked a few secrets for everything we cover in there. And each week... We add more. And uh, you can find the treasure room on patreon.com backslash floor fantasy and lore. And how do you spell that, Aaron? That's lore with an F at the beginning. So it sounds like floor, but it's not the floor you're thinking because it's our floor. uh, We hope you enjoyed your time on the floor. Uh, Think about your favorite part of the episode. Now think about your nerdiest friend. Who is it? What is their name? They want to know about the floor. Stop holding out on them. Go and tell them about your favorite part. Because all of this is more fun together.